guys, I'm Amy, and you've landed on Bella's Bargains. That's my cow, Effingham, and sometimes he co-hosts with me. He's got a lot to say. This channel is Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree, and only Dollar Tree. And why? Because everything at the Dollar Tree is a dollar and a quarter, people. So stick around, consider subscribing, and don't forget to give me that big thumbs up. And if you want to know more about the four uploads I do every week, just check out the description box for more information. Enjoy! There are places I remember all my life, though some have changed, some forever, not for better. Some have gone and some remain. All these places had their moments with lovers and friends. I still can recall some are dead and some are living. In my life, I've loved them all, but of all these friends and lovers, there is no one compares with you, and these memories lose their meaning. When I think of love as something not new, though I'll know I'll never lose affection for people and things that went before. I know I'll often stop and think about them in my life. I love you more. Hi guys, welcome to Bella Bargains. My name is Amy. You know, that's like one of those songs. It's melodic. So it's just like, dun, 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 It's like sort of the same thing over and over. So the words are more like a poem than a song, in my opinion. Anyway, but I still like it. In my life, I've loved you more. So. Anyway, all right, <laughs> enough about that Beatles song. Hmm, nobody has ever put that one down as one of their favorites, I, but I do like it. Okay, so because I'm on a Beatles kick. Hey, listen, if you're new to the channel, you should know that this is a Dollar Tree channel. Oh my gosh, like everybody's messaging me. They're changing their prices, they're doing that. Okay, whatever they do, I'm sticking with the Dollar Tree. Because, let me just explain this. I can't go to 17 different stores, you guys. I don't know how these crafters do it. They go to thrift stores. They go to Michael's. They go to Joanne's Fabrics. They go to Target. They go to Dollar Tree. They go to the Dollar General. They go to Family Dollar. They go everywhere. I'd never be home. Yeah. Okay. So, enough about that. I'm sticking with the Dollar Tree. So, let's just dive in. You should know everything on my channel is Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree, and only Dollar Tree. So um, that means I do Dollar Tree crafts, hauls, DIYs, food tasting, everything Dollar Tree. So today is no different. And today you have landed on themed Thursday. So this is a craft day. And I've got three farmhouse crafts for you. And I've got to say, I'm pretty happy. And some of them are so easy. Actually, we got three of them are super easy. I'm going to start with the easiest. So Excuse me while I turn around and grab this sign up here. I am doing my kitchen farmhouse. And so it's time. It's time to get some of this stuff done. And um, this is one of the things that I did. Let me, I think this is best if I show you what it looked like originally because I accidentally bought two, which happens a lot in my life. But um, this was, well, let's just show you. This is what it looked like. Yeah, let's just put one up next to the other because I want you guys to see the complete transformation. I have really vintaged it up and I want to talk about the things that I do to vintage it up. But one of the things that I find is that they don't finish their edging. See, it's just like, it's just not finished and I do the dark. And when you look at the signs now side by side, See how outlining it, you can just barely see that outline and it just finishes it and makes it pop. Now, this is what it looked like, which was fine. This is all I did to it and all I did was just finish it and vintage it out and add this little bow. Watch, I'll show you. Let's upscale. Okay, so um, shoe polish around the edges, but I'm just sanding off the 
Um, you know, the paper always hangs over on the edges. So always when you get a Dollar Tree sign, you can do that. And I went around with the shoe polish twice around the edges. You could use a permanent black marker, would do exactly the same thing. And now I'm just doing a little bit of sanding and we're going to rough it up. So I'm just taking that sanding block, going across it and just giving it some rough spots. And then I'm going to just start adding in shoe polish to bring that from a white to more of a vintage aged color. And that's just, and when you scratch it, sort of those places will seep in that shoe polish just a little bit more. But I always go over it and then grab a wipe and you just sort of start wiping off and it leaves a dingy look to the sign. So just keep adding until you get it to where you want it. It still looks pretty fresh to me. So I'm going to give it one good gouge right there. Just give it a gouge and then start adding color in there. It's like, you know, something scraped up against the sign. And I add black. I add brown. I'm just adding in colors. And every time that you add and you wipe away, you leave residuals behind. And so, for instance, I'm going to dab here. Then I'm going to take a wipey and I'm going to take black shoe polish and wipe it on it. But then I go back with the sander because when you sand after you do that, it blends it in really well. Just if you watch as I sand that, it'll just, it's sort of like, poof. now it's like part of it. I don't know how to explain that. And then finally, I'm going to go around the edges one more time with that marker and I'm going to bleed into the areas that are, I'm not marker, shoe polish, and I'm bleeding into the areas that I really sanded because it really gives the edge an, an aged look. Now I'm going to make my crisscross or messy bow, whatever you want to call it. So that piece of black polka dot was just this random leftover piece that I had. So I just used it, that as my template. And I'm adding in all these other black and whites. And I'm going to tie it all together. And I end up knotting the ends of it because the tails are too long. There's so many ways to make a messy bow. And um, so you can do it however you want. I just happen to like messy bows on farmhouse stuff. I do tie it on right here after I put the knots in the end. It's a little long. So I just knot the ends of the ribbon, which I love this look. It's actually... One of my favorite styles of bows. And I'm going to tie the bow on after I dovetail the tails on the black and white one. But when I tie it on to that little hanging ribbon there, it makes it hang uneven. So I actually end up taking it off. And I hot glued it right above the tack that was on the sign. So just FYI. But other than that, everything remained the same. I love this piece. Super simple. I will double side it when the holidays come this year. All right. On to the next one. something I will double side this I almost did it for today's video and I said no I'll just wait I have a Christmas one that I want to put on the back and so I will when it's time I'll do this side because it'll just hang in my kitchen and then at Christmas it'll flip around I love to do those I think that's so fun but also just see how that's that really one run one one rough spot and it really ju it just transforms it into looking like this old, old, old sign. I love it. And I did nothing but on my bow. See the knots? Do you not love that? I need to do a ribbon video. I have like 47 different types of bows. And I need to do that video. Uh, maybe next week I'll actually pull out all my ribbon and give you guys a bow tutorial. Is anybody super interested in that? Um, just to show you so many different ways to do bows. I've seen bow tutorials online, but um, like I have like lots of different bows. Okay, well anyway, this is one of them. It's a messy bow, but it's with the knotted ends. And what that does is just gives it this full feeling. I just, I love that. Okay, so that was number one that I did. I can't decide which one to show you next, but... Um, I guess I'll go to this one right here. I'm in love with this. So let me just talk first. They came out with these. They are chalkboard cutouts. 
of farm animals, a cow, a pig, and a chicken, and the backside is this. I bought all three because this is what I saw. I saw them stacked. Do you now see them stacked? Yes! It's so cool. So let's just talk about a few things. Do you notice, just by sanding the edges, how it changes and pops the form of that cutout? Do you see it? That's just sanding it and putting a little bit of shoe, I'm out of shoe polish, oh my gosh, anybody, any crafters? Any of my subscribers, if you bought shoe polish from the Dollar Tree, please send me some. I can't find it anymore, which means I'm gonna have to come up with a new thing to use for doing my aging with, I will. Cause you know, I love that challenge, right? All right, so I stack these three. Let me just show you, but before I do, do you wanna see the biggest surprise of all? Do you not love this down here, Farm Fresh? Pretty, one, two, three, wait, what? Yes, it's double-sided. In love, in love, in love. I'm not sure which side I like better. I'll just flip it around in my kitchen. Like one day it'll be this, the next day it'll be this, and then it'll be this. Okay, watch how I made this. <laughs> See, they're all on stands. Let's pull the stickers off, and I'm gonna have to get them off the stand. The way I end up doing this is just uh, I tried to score it with a knife, I tried to hammer it off, and eventually I end up sticking a flathead little mini screwdriver in there between the base and the farm animal, and sort of pounding it in there to get them separated, and that and that sort of worked. So, and I did, after I got these all out of there, I cleaned up those little stands because you know, I mean, you know, I'm going to use them for something else. I love these. I love these little stands because all of their wood things fit in there perfectly. So you can take any sign and make it a stand. Anyway, so see, I'm going to shove that in there and then I'm going to hammer it and it's going to wedge it apart from the other one. So that works. And um, eventually I get them out of there. Okay, so... Once I get them both out and separated from their signs, after a little bit of work there, um, I have to clean them up because there's there's actually like that whole piece goes into that groove, and I've broken that piece. See right there, you can see. I'm cleaning this up. Um, so there's bits hanging on the, the feet there that I've got to trim off because I'm not going to have that, right? So just get on my little cutting board, and I'm just going to trim off those little pieces to make this a cohesive hoofs on the little pig. I'm gonna do the same thing once we get to the chicken. And then once I get those all those two separated from their stands, I of course am leaving the cow on his stand because he is the base or she is the base. I don't know, these days, who knows. All right, so I'm gonna give them all, I believe it's like two coats of white. This wood soaks in that paint really, really well. By the way, if you ever wanted to seal it with Mod Podge, you can do that, and then you don't have to put as many coats on. But I did not. I was okay with it not being stark white because I'm giving this a farmhouse look. So two coats. Uh, was it two, three? Uh, it doesn't matter. Whatever you're comfortable with. And now I'm going to decorate the back side of these. So this is just a rub-on transfer that has all these words. And I thought I could use this one that I'd already cut some words out. That didn't work. So I just got a full sheet and put it on there, rub that on. Wasn't filming. There you go. That's how I did it. And then this, the little sign, I'm going to glue this onto little Mr. Piggy with some tacky glue and center it right in the pig's belly. And then we're going to use that transfer that's right there on screen right now is going to go on the pig. I liked using the part that said pantry. I just thought that was an appropriate thing to put in the middle of the pig. I mean the cow. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to have to fill in those spots, right, which was super easy to do. So once I do that, I've pretty much got the back side of these done. I'm just doing rubbing them on, and, and then we're good. So once I've got to figure out what I'm going to do on the front side, and so after I get done doing this rub on, I do find the word that farm fresh 
and I paint it to go on the front side of this cow. You know, I thought about something, putting something on the front side of all of them. In the end, I really just liked the way it looked. This side was a little busier, and so I thought leaving the black side a little less busy uh, just looked good. So, all right, so see how I've covered him? He's completely covered in rub-ons now. And I'm going to do the farm fresh. going to paint it with white. I gave it two coats again. I'm not too concerned because I'm also going to age this up. So I'm just trying to make it not be wood. Just to, to be almost a, it's almost a whitewash because it's pretty thin layer of white on this farm fresh. And once I get that done, it's really a matter of assembling them now. So, and drying, right? I did not use hot glue. I've talked to you guys before about this. I don't like to use hot glue when I'm gluing something together because it leaves a space. The hot glue takes up space, whereas wood glue adheres the two and dries really flat. So on all of these pieces, I am just using wood glue. So I'm going to take my Farm Fresh, um, and when I glue it down, I have to let it dry. Everything that I did, I had to let dry. So I'm sanding right now, sanding all the edges on all three of the pieces, front and back side. On some of the rub-ons, it was it would, came around the side a little bit, and some of the white paint. So I'm just doing a sanding, getting it all sanded, and on all of just just the edges. On the on the front side of these, on the black side, I did do a little bit of scuffing just on the on the bodies of the animals, not for any reason, but just to sort of pull the shine back a little bit. Not they're super shiny, but again to give it a more vintage look so all right we're going to be standing here for a minute i'm sorry too much video of this that's okay <laughs> just how it goes sometimes we film too much of something as hard as i try oh i was getting my nail file out to get the little areas like it, where the tail is and on the curvy parts and just whatever i could to sand those edges because they're harder to get to with just a uh, sanding block. All right, so this is going to be done, and then we're going to glue on Farm Fresh to the front of the cow, and I use some clips to put that on there. Again, I just used wood glue on putting this whole thing together, just wood glue. So I think that's important. Again, this the hot glue leaves a little space where the glue is. And here's where I'm just sort of roughing up the front side of these with some sandpaper. Not heavy duty sandpaper, just very light. And they're going to go together so nicely. I was showing you the difference when they're outlined and when they're not. I guess first I'm going to do some aging on these. So just using my shoe polish to give it a little brown tint on the sides where it's super stark white where we sanded it. And now we're going to hot, um, not hot glue, we're going to wood glue down our farm fresh. And then, of course, later on, I'll go over the Farm Fresh with the shoe polish as well to vintage it up. But I have to leave this sit for an hour or so while it dries on there. So this was had to be done in stages because I was waiting for stuff to dry. So I'm gonna, it falls off at first right here. It drops, and I have to put it back on. It's like, dang it, I went to get the clips. Stand it up, and it goes, bloom, bloom, as I flipped it over. Anyway, I put it back on there. Listen, these are just normal things that happen when you're crafting, right? You guys, come on. So I'm going to clamp that on and let her dry. I'm fixing a couple. There was a little spot of the yard that came off, so glued that on. Anyway, it's fine. And then um, I think next I'm going to finish aging up the other pieces while this is drying, if my memory serves me correctly. And again, I'm dead. this is the last of my brown shoe polish. I've got to come up with something else. The reason I like it so much is it has a sponge applicator. And so it's super easy to put on your projects. I don't have to pull out like a paintbrush or anything like that. Anyway, all right, I'm going to age up the Farm Fresh now. There we go. Get some of that brown on there. I think I'm going to age up the rest of them now. Yeah, we're just going to get a little brown around them, a little vintage feel to them. And I'm also going to do the front, the other side, or the back side, I guess, is actually, which were where it's pretty stark white, and we've got the rub-ons and all that. Concentrating on the edges, you'll notice, right? Really concentrating on those edges. And then once that's done, I'm going to glue it all together, 
and it's going to look amazing. I think mean, this is super cute. I am I do really think this is super cute. I hope you guys think this one is cute too. Let you watch me finish aging them up and glue them all together. I glue it and I clamp it. So that, and then I left it dry for a few hours. And that was it. This project was done. Let me know what you think of this one. because I found that whatever they use down here, I think it's like a wood glue or something, the heat in, in previous DIYs, the heat gun hasn't helped. So I've just done the old pry thing. But what you notice, I did not remove that part because when I glued it on, I wanted it to look like it was standing on it. Now I know on this side, it, it's still, it's fine, but I left the little extra on there so it was standing and it stands. I was worried, like, is it going to topple over? It does not. It stands perfectly. I think this is super, super cute. And as an added benefit, you, of course, could leave messages on here, right? Dinner at six or don't be such a pig. Leave some for mom. I don't know. <laughs> ah, yeah. Okay. So I love that it's two-sided. And I'm just loving this. You know, these are those rub-ons. And if you guys saw how I did that, right? Because it didn't totally cover but just using those rub-ons just the way they are gives such a perfect effect. This little sign was off one of the, the cathedral windows from two years ago or something, but I keep all those little things. Okay, so I love it. And I did absolutely nothing to the base, just left it. This is my favorite piece today, I think. I don't know, because then there's this one. Oh no, I toppled over my... My farm animals went falling. Ba bam. Okay. Let me get this one. Hold. Let me get this off of here. You guys are going to see my backside, right? Okay. This is something I've come up with. I don't think anybody else has done this. I think this is an Amy original. We'll probably see it now. They're going to all. This is, first of all, these cute little farmhouse little, I don't even know what you would call them, charms, I guess. Like, with beads and, and there's no tassel on them. So I've added the tassel and I added a shower ring because you know what this is? This is an, a stove charm or an oven charm. Mm -hmm. I put it on my oven. Do you wanna see? Watch this. I 
oven charm. So easy. Um, I've already rusted it here. So I stuck it outside. I sprayed, rusted up. So it's all rusted. Cut off the tag, and now I'm going to work on the tassel. Again, this is one of the tassels that comes off of the uh, one of the Easter garlands, hence the pink ribbon, which, of course, I'm not going to use. So I'm going to take this all apart, and then I'm going to use that pink ribbon sort of as my template for how long to cut these, although I cut them slightly a little bit shorter. And then I'm going to cut three of each one of those. And I think I have one, two, three, four elements that I'm going to cut to put on there. So the black and white jute, I'm going to cut four of those, and so on and so forth. And then get that done and put the tassel together. So I take it all apart, untie it, and I start laying the ribbon on. So um, no particular pattern for this. They're just I'm just putting them on. Uh, I mean, I repeat the pattern for the four pieces, in it, but no particular pattern to the four, how I put the four pieces on there. Okay, so get all those done, and then I'm going to tie it at the top really quickly to hold it all together. And I'm going to use the black and white jute twine. In the end, I take it off. Um, it just ends up being too thick, which, you know, that happens. So I'm just going to tie a knot on the top. And then I'm going to take the actual jute twine and put the neck on it, I guess is what you would call it, right? So I've already cut a piece. I don't know why I cut a second piece. Just sometimes when you're doing this, yeah. Anyway, so I'm knotting it in the middle, and then I'm going to go put the neck on. So the way you do this, right, you do the loop, and then you wrap around. Put your end, once you're done, you put your end through the loop and then pull the loop from the tail that's hanging out on the bottom. If you don't know how to do this, um, it's, see, all I did was you leave a tail, put a loop, and then you start wrapping it around. Actually, I started to go through here and I was like, what are you doing, Amy? Yeah, and I was like, nope, start again. <laughs> so, you tail loop at the top and then you just go round and round and round and round but you have the loop at the top as you're going around there and so what happens is when you get to the end and you've wrapped your neck enough times you take the end when you're done wrapping and you put it through the loop see right here I'm gonna cut I put it through the loop now it's sticking out and then you pull the tail and it pulls the end underneath where you've wrapped and there's it's never gonna come undone it's like a way of doing a knot without a knot, and then you just cut that off. Okay, that's it. That's it. So I went and got my really good scissors and to cut this down. There's just two, these were too long. These I say it every time. The tassels that they make are too long. So and now I get this done. I'm gonna plot another loop of beads, farmhouse beads that Dollar Tree has sold, and it's got the um, the buffalo check um, bead on it the other thing of beads you'll see here in a second and it's got white ones and so I'm gonna add some beads to this to make it a little bit longer so that it can be the charm on my oven so I'm just gonna take this part open it up and then take some tape wrap it on the end of it so I can actually um, string the beads the additional beads onto here to make the longer one that I want this is the one I'm talking about so see and it's got those buffalo check ones in there I'm just gonna cut this and take some of those beads off and then I'm going to take some of the beads off of the one that I'm got my rusted farm animals on there and I'm going to add to it right as they're rolling off the table <laughs> like, I was like oh my gosh so I had to get tape here they, it's just too funky so I go get tape to make this easier but um, all I'm going to do is I'm adding a white bead so I went the the wood, the black, then the white, and then the wood, black, and white, and then I added a check one in the middle. So I only added two check ones onto here. And now I'm just going to attach that tassel to my, um, uh, to the garland thing, the little charm thing. I just used the end of the jute twine there, tied it in, and then I tucked the end into the beads ahead of it. And now I'm just going to grab a shower curtain rod holder, not rod, shower curtain ring. But they're the ones that, yeah, those. And then that's it. It's done. I love it.
busted this piece up. And if you watch my channel, you know. It's vinegar, hydrogen peroxide, and salt. And just an even amount of vinegar and hydrogen peroxide and a ton of salt in there. And I just stick it out in the sunshine and I squirt it and it comes out rusted like this, which I absolutely love. I love that effect. But I think my little stove charm, actually I guess it was here, is so cute. Using the shower curtain to hang it on the oven handle, I, I think this is very original. I don't think I've seen it anywhere. Have you guys? You know I love to come up with stuff like this. So, and I just love taking those tassels, which were from the garlands that the Dollar Tree sells. The tassels are always too long. I always add ribbon to them and I always embellish them and shorten them a little bit. I love this. I'm wondering if the cat's gonna play with it. I did think about that. The dog watched me like, what are you doing? Another one would be, it could be a drawer charm or a refrigerator charm or, I mean, anything, but I'm definitely putting it on my oven. Well, you saw the pictures. So while we're talking about kitchens, I wanted to talk about this. I have been collecting these. I think I have some coming out in a haul also. So Dollar Tree every once in a while puts out a 100% cotton dish towel and they are, they're flower sack towels. These are them. So I've been saving them to do my kitchen over and now they're all gonna come out. And so I'm just gonna show you these really quickly. They're gonna go into my kitchen right now. I'm taking my old dish towels. They're gonna become rags for crafting. But these are 100% flower, I mean, 100% flower. They're flower sacks, 100% cotton. But they are so good at drying dishes. I love to use cotton like that. So anyway, just to keep an eye out, you guys, they only come out certain times. This one is out right now, I think. And how cute will this one look with this hanging next to it? Yes. Yeah, I'm going to go do that. Okay. Anyway, I just wanted to show those really quickly. Also, the little bee one. So, I've been saving them. And now they're going in my kitchen. It's time. It's time to farmhouse out my kitchen. These things are all going in the kitchen. And so, which one is your favorite today? I, gotta, I think the stove charm is just really cute idea. I think lots of people are going to copy me. I think this could be, you know, I should do a short. <gasps> I should do a short with it. Maybe it would go viral. I don't know. Anyway, so that's my favorite today. Um, but I got to say, I think this is super cool and original as well. Obviously, I'm playing off something that we've seen, which is the stacked animals. And this is just so easy, but it just transforms it. And it's just, it's going to go in my kitchen a lot better now. All right, that's it, everybody. Have a great day, a great week, a great life. And then all those things I remember. <laughs> in my life, I love you more. All right, everybody. Happy hunting at your local dog. From, no, hold on. Let's say this right. Have a great day, great week, a great life. And as always, from your singing crafty crafter, happy hunting at your local Dollar Tree. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up or catch a ride. Please leave a comment down below. I really do want to know which one of these is your favorite. Will you be making a stove charm? And um, anything else that you might want to tell me. Thanks so much for watching, besties. I'll see you back here in two days for a holla for your dollar haul, which I'm going to go film right now. All right, we'll see you later. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.